The following video is going to teach you how to professionally pack up a client's house when you're on the job. You're going to want to start by protecting your work surface with a padded moving blanket. This is going to make sure you don't scratch the tabletop or the countertop while you're working. Grab your pack of paper and split it open and then we're going to be ready to start wrapping items up. When packing plates, you're going to want to do it just like we're showing you here. You place a plate down, followed by a sheet of paper and then another plate and you keep going until you have a stack of no more than five plates at a time. Once you have your stack, you can wrap up the entire bundle and then you can place this directly into a box standing upwards. The same goes for bowls. You go bowl, paper, bowl, paper, and you keep that going until your stack is four or five bowls. Then place the entire pack into the box. When it comes to glasses, we're going to roll it like such. Start by rolling it and then flip the paper in and continue rolling it. It's super important not to roll it too tightly. The idea is to wrap it somewhat loosely so that there's kind of air pockets inside of that paper. Stemware is a bit trickier, but it's not too hard. Start by protecting the neck like this with rolled up paper. Then you're going to want to fill the inside of this glass with some crushed up paper so that it'll protect it from any downward pressure. Once you've done that, you can take one or two sheets of paper and then you roll it like a regular glass. Make sure it's not too tight and that you have a lot of air pockets in there to really protect it when it's in that box. When it comes to cutlery, don't be lazy. Do it the right way. Take a stack of one type of cutlery and bundle it up and roll it. Once that's done, you can do that with the other items as well. Then you take those bundles and you stick them inside of the tray. Once your tray is all filled up, you're going to go ahead and wrap the entire tray in paper and tape it closed like so. The reason you want to do it like that is because you don't want a bunch of clanky stuff inside of your boxes. This way everything's snug and nothing's moving. This is the right way to do it. If you don't do Tupperware properly, you're going to end up wasting a ton of space inside your boxes. Start by taking off the lids and then stacking the Tupperware all together. You're going to wrap the Tupperware separately from the lids. Start by wrapping the bases like so. Cooking utensils couldn't be easier. Grab a handful, wrap them inside a paper and roll them. If they're sharp, use your common sense and make sure that you have enough paper folded around the sharp end so that it's not gonna poke through the paper or stab through the box. That's the only thing you need to think about when you're wrapping these bigger kitchen utensils. Pots and pans are the same concept as bowls and plates. You always want to put at least one sheet of paper between the pots and pans though because oftentimes it's Teflon or a material that you really don't want getting scratched. So it's super important to have at least one sheet of paper between each item. Repeat the same idea for pans. When it comes to small appliances, be sure to take extra precaution. You really want to wrap it up in paper to make sure that they don't get scratched and you want to pack them safely into a box 
where nothing can dent them. A lot of times they're made of stainless steel and if you just shove them in a box, they're going to get dented. Oftentimes these things are quite costly, so we really want you to be cautious when you're packing small appliances. Your best friend in the kitchen is called the dish barrel. This box is twice as thick as other boxes and you're going to want to use this when wrapping up dishes and other breakables in your kitchen. Start by taping up the base really well as you can see here. They do get pretty heavy and you don't want the bottom giving out on you while you're moving it. Tape the side shut like you see and to make it easier to work tape down the side flaps so they're not in your way when you're trying to fill it up. Here's how we load a dish barrel. You're going to want to start by layering the bottom with crush which is rolled up paper and you're going to make a whole base of this to offer cushioning for whatever you're going to pack first. Start with your plates and bowls and stack them vertically in the box. The reason for that is that they're stronger and less likely to break when they're on their side. Start by filling the whole bottom of the box with dishes and heavier items and then fill in any gaps with crushed up paper like you see me doing here. You really want to fill in all of those nooks and crannies so that nothing can move or shift within the box. Once that's done, we're going to repeat the layer of crush like we did at the bottom of the box. This is going to separate your bottom layer from your next layer, which in this case is going to be glassware. Glasses is the same concept. You always want them standing up vertical. You never pack them on their side. Once you've filled up your second layer, if there's any open pockets like you can see here, you can take bunched up paper and fill them in. Again, you don't want anything shifting inside this box. Now you're going to repeat more crush, which is going to separate your second from your third layer. By now your box is going to be getting a little bit heavy. So your third layer, you're going to want to keep it light. You can use Tupperwares and other small home appliances, which don't weigh very much. Once you've packed these into the box, go ahead and take a bunch of crushed up paper and really fill up the box to the brim. You really want it full to the top so that when you push down on the lid, it doesn't collapse. When packing stemware, we're going to pack it into a 1.5 securely and then we're going to place that box inside of a dish barrel. Start by loading up the 1.5 like you see here and again fill in all the nooks and crannies with crushed paper to make sure that these wine glasses aren't going to shift at all in this box. Close and tape up the box and then transfer this over to the dish barrel which you should have already put a layer of crush in the bottom. Once it's in there, fill up the sides with crushed paper and then you're going to do a second layer of crush followed by a second box of stemware. Two 1.5 boxes fit perfectly into a dish barrel. The reason we take these extra precautions is because stemware is very fragile but if you do it like this, there's no way that these can get damaged. Start packing your pantry into a 1.5 cubic foot box as you can see here. If you have oils or liquids, these items should be placed into a Ziploc bag or a plastic bag of sorts prior to being put into the box. You should then wrap it up in packing paper and place it securely in the box. If there's no plastic bags on site, just tell your client that it's not something that we can take and that they can come back for it later. We never pack perishable items or items from a fridge into a cardboard box. These should be placed into a client's cooler or cooler bags and taken by themselves. The same thing goes for alcohol and other glass bottles containing liquid. These items should not be packed into a cardboard box. If anything, put them into a separate box and have the client take it themselves or just tell the client that unfortunately we can't deal with it. The 
first thing we're going to show you is how to pack a wardrobe box, which is essentially a portable closet for people's clothes. Start by taping the bottom shut, at least with three strands of tape to make sure that it's really firmly, and then go across the other side as well. Next, you're going to flip it over and pull down the front and the sides. Take the metal hanging bar and place it inside the top slots of the box. Remember to put tape on top of the metal part here. One, to secure it in place, but also because if this slips, it can cut your skin. Start by filling up the bottom with some smaller, lighter items, like small shoes or empty backpacks and bags or pillows. Once you've used the space in the bottom, you can start by hanging clothes directly into the box. You don't want to jam them in, you want them hanging nice and straight so that they don't get wrinkled. Now you can close up the box and tape it shut. You'll see there's flaps on the top of this box which will help you close it up tightly. Make sure that you use the flaps first and then secure it with tape by going length and widthwise on the box. These boxes can get heavy and you really want them being secured and strong. So once these flaps are in, secure it even further by using tape to keep it shut. Poke through the handles and carry it like so. When packing bedding, you're going to want to use a four cube box. It's a bigger box, but the bedding is generally lighter. Start by putting a clean sheet of paper at the bottom of the box, and you can start by placing pillows in like so. You don't want to cram them in on all different sides. You want to keep them flat and protected. One sheet of paper to keep them clean and then close up the box. When it comes to sheets and blankets, make sure you fold them. Don't just shove them into a box because they will get wrinkled. The same thing goes for towels and linens. Always make sure they're folded and always fill up a box right to the brim so that they're nice and full. To wrap a piece of artwork, we're going to place it on the ground and wrap it in bubble wrap first. And then we're going to place it into a picture frame box. A picture frame box has two parts, inner and outer. Start by placing it in the inner box, which you'll notice isn't quite big enough. And we're going to pack paper all around the edges so that it can't move. Once that's done, we're going to take the outer part of the box, as you can see, and we're going to slide that over the entire thing so that the whole picture frame is now covered. Sometimes it'll fit in one box alone, but when it's too big for one, you're going to have to telescope two boxes together. When packing lamps, you're going to want to make sure to do it properly, as oftentimes these items can get damaged. Start by taking the bulb out of the lamp and setting the pieces aside. Wrap the bulb in packing paper and set that aside as well. It's important to wrap the shade in paper so that it doesn't get dirty during packing or unpacking in the box. If you have a second shade, you can fit that in with the previous one and again, take the light bulb that's packed up and place it with the shade That'll help the client when it comes time to unboxing and setting stuff up. You can wrap the whole pack up in another piece of paper and place it into a box. It's important once it's in the box to pack crushed paper around the edges to protect it. If you have a pillow lying around, that's also a good thing to pack on top before closing up the box. In a separate box, you can pack the bases of the lamps. You never want to pack the shades with the bases. Fill in all the gaps. And then you can close this box up. 
smaller picture frames can be wrapped up and placed into a box. Simply take them off the roll and wrap them up the same way you would have done your dishes more or less. These can go directly into a box standing upright. You can place other things in the box as well that you find around the bedroom. Books should always be facing up with the spine pointing downwards. Continue filling up your box with other items that you find within the bedroom. You're going to want to fill in all the nooks and crannies of this box so it's properly filled up. Once the box is filled, you can close it up and tape it shut. Place non-hanging clothing into a box folded properly to avoid them getting wrinkled. The following non-admissible items may never be packed into boxes. These should be left to the client to take on their own. Detergents, cleaning products, Javel water, paints, aerosol cans, lighters, matches, anything like this. Legally, we're not allowed to transport these in our trucks, let alone pack them into boxes for our clients. Next, we're gonna show you how to pack items that are much more fragile and require more attention to detail than other everyday things. For example, this statue, you're gonna to wanna to pack the space between her arms with packing paper prior to wrapping it up. Place it in bubble wrap, tape it shut and set it aside. This glass horse, for example, is extremely fragile. You wanna start by placing it in bubble wrap and once that's done, you're gonna place it in a lot of packing paper. Take multiple sheets, wrap it in these, and once your first bundle is done, we're gonna take an extra precaution and wrap it in another piece of paper. You really want it well protected so that nothing can crush it in the box. For something like this decorative skull, it's important to wrap the antlers and the head separately. Essentially, wrap it the same way you would expect something to show up from Amazon, for example, wrapped and packed in the box. It's important that all sides of it are properly wrapped. Once this is wrapped, you can tape it closed and we'll show you in a couple moments how to pack it into the box. This metal sphere has some weight to it. So you're really going to want to protect that with paper to make it softer inside of that box. When wrapping this globe, start by rolling paper like this and wrapping it so you can protect the neck on its own. Once that's done, you can go ahead and wrap the entire globe up in packing paper. Again, use more paper than you think you need. Paper isn't expensive, but it goes a long way in protecting these items prior to being loaded into a box. all your items are packed up you can go ahead and start packing them into a box as you see here we have a two cube already lined with crushed paper the glass horse fits nicely there the sphere fits nicely beside it without putting any pressure on the glass horse the silver bowl tucks in right there neatly again without putting any pressure and if you want to put something light on top, you can go ahead, put a little bit of paper in between, and then load it up with the globe. 
fill in all the nooks and crannies with bunched up and crushed paper to offer lots of protection to these items inside the box. Super important to really load the top up with paper so that even if you put pressure on the lid, nothing will crush inside the box. For something very fragile, like the decorative skull, you're gonna to wanna to put that in a box on its own. Fill the box with crushed paper, place it in, and stuff all the way around it with other pieces of crushed paper. Once this box is filled up with crush, you can close it up and make sure to write very fragile on this box. Once it's taped up, we're gonna take this box and place it inside of a dish barrel the same way that we showed you how to do stemware earlier in this video. When it comes to the statue that we've wrapped up, we're gonna place this into a two cubic foot box at first. As you can see, we're gonna to attempt to put crush around the statue to protect it. However, we're starting to notice that perhaps it's a little bit too big for this box and then we're unable to get crush inside and around it. So don't force it and don't jam it in the box. Switch out your two cube box for a bigger four cube box, which will have plenty of space for the statue. If you have other items like pillows lined around in the kitchen, it's a great opportunity to use them to help protect this item in the box. Essentially, you're packing the pillows at the same time, but offering lots of safety for the statue. The other areas can be filled in with crush to make sure that it's fully packed and protected in the box. That's about all we're gonna show you today when it comes to packing up the house. If you have any questions about anything else, please do not hesitate to ask us.